What's up, Block fam? Welcome to today's episode where I'm going to do an updated video on my Motovlog helmet setup. As you guys can see here, I have set up a number of helmets for Motovlogging here on the Blockhead channel. We are currently in the Blockhead Moto podcast room. Quiet space to be able to do this. Nice, clean surface area to organize all the stuff that we're putting onto the helmet. So I've had a number of requests for this video from you guys in regards to an updated Motovlog helmet setup video. I know you guys have watched the previous one I did. Man, I was like, years and years ago at this point. It helped a lot of you guys setting up a Motovlog helmet. So I'm basically just gonna do an updated helmet setup video. Not much has changed to be honest. Like I've, I've kept the same mounting point. So I basically mount here. A lot of manufacturers do have uh, mounts for the centers of the helmets here, but I don't do that because what happens then is that if you mount the camera in the center, as you can see the lens for the GoPro is off centered. So unless you have like an action camera where the lens is in the middle like that, I set mine with a mount here so that I can center the lens to the helmet like that there. I also try to get it as close to my eye line as possible so you guys can see exactly what I see. I've gotten a number of compliments regarding the angle of the GoPro for mine. So if you guys are wanting to emulate this, I'm pretty much gonna show you everything that you need and it's gonna be a step-by-step -step and hopefully it is insightful and helps you. I'll be sure to drop the links to everything that I use down in the description below. I'm gonna tell you guys my GoPro settings as well. Go ahead, roll the intro and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so we're just gonna jump right into this video, no nonsense. I'm gonna show you guys all the parts that are used and then we're gonna mount it up to the helmet. You can pretty much use any full face helmet that you want. I am using a Rurock Atlas 4.0, so I've been wearing the Rurock Atlas line for a number of years. This is kind of like my helmet history. I've had Bell, Showy, another Bell there, Simpson, and then my journey into Rurock, which is the Atlas 1.0, which is those two, and then 2.0, 3.0, and now we're on the 4.0, so. Massive changes in this one. If you guys haven't seen this video yet where we go over this helmet, be sure to check it out after this one. Would highly recommend this helmet. Link also in the description below. Just going over everything in terms of parts here. So you've got your GoPro mount here, right? So that's the part that clicks in to the curved mount here. So uh, that comes with GoPros. You can also order these like just online and stuff. Mount there mount there, those click into each other. You've got this curved arm, which is a separate piece that you order. I have a 90 degree adapter there. So that basically keeps you from having to put an extra link in there and it pivots it up 90 degrees. On the end of that 90 degree adapter, I have a housing here, which was actually sent to me from a subscriber from a company called Motorrads. And that houses the GoPro mic adapter. So unfortunately, you with the new GoPros, you can't plug a 3.5 mic directly in into it. It does require a microphone adapter. On the older GoPros, you could plug directly into it, but with the new ones, you cannot. And then as far as I know, you have to buy the GoPro brand adapter in order for the microphone to work. There are other adapters that are out there that I've seen, and people have sent me feedback about them not working or the mic quality being terrible. One of the compliments that I always get is my mic quality is actually really good, the vocal and the audio quality. If you guys want to replicate that, I would recommend getting a GoPro audio adapter. Now, these were hard to find a couple years ago, but I think they're pretty much in stock now you can find most of this stuff on Amazon. Like I said, links in the description below. In order to use that audio adapter without totally removing the side door, I'm running a GoPro Hero 10. The audio adapter is for the GoPro Hero 7 or 8 and above. So I do have this little side door with a cutout for the audio adapter. It comes off just like that. So you've got basically it just clips on uh, unfortunately, it doesn't pivot like some of the last ones, but if you didn't have that door, what would happen is you'd have this audio adapter and it would just plug in and these components would be exposed to the elements. So if you end up getting caught in the rain, I live in Florida, so it rains all the time, obviously going to get wet. So there's this company, Telesyn, also available Amazon uh, that makes these little doors that you can put over the top and they just click right on like super easy. And that gives you access to that little USB-C port right there. So plug that in and then your microphone adapter is good to go. Now the microphone adapter has the 3.5. It also has a, another USB-C, I wanna say, uh, which I've taped up because I don't ever use it. I just use batteries. Now I have had a lot of questions from people asking why I don't use the media mod. A lot of people do use the media mod, but I do not. The reason I don't is because it kills the battery much, much faster on the GoPros. That media mod is dependent on the battery inside the GoPro. Now you can hook up you know, an external battery source and wire it up and all that stuff, but that's just gonna add extra weight to the helmet. So rather than carrying like an extra huge battery pack and mounting it and all that stuff, what I do is I just use the battery in the GoPro 
I make sure I grab a handful of batteries. I've got a number of them setting out in the shop. It's super easy to replace them. I mean, you can just boop, boop. This is all one handed, right? And then what I'll do, this is just my method, right? So we've got this little pocket right here. I'll just carry two good ones in that pocket. And then whenever I'm riding, if I need to swap over, I can do this on the bike. I'll basically pull that little door off, pull the battery. I'll take the old battery and I'll put it into this pocket, like into the big pocket, right? And I'll grab a fresh one out of here. I place them facing downwards. So whenever I do grab them, they're pretty much ready to go into the GoPro just like that. Just part of my strategy that I do. It's been working for me for a couple of years and <laughs> no reason to change it if it works, right? So yeah, I think that pretty much explains all the parts there. That brings us to the microphone. I get a lot of questions on what microphone I use. It is a little costly. So there is a little GS on there. So that stands for Giant Squid. Giant Squid, I think people also have some pretty good results with a microphone called Purple Panda. This is what I've been using. This is my experience. I've also used a Seno mic every now and then, but this is like really quick and easy uh, to be able to take the microphone adapter, the mic, plug it in and you're good to go. So what I would recommend before getting going, is go ahead and plug all that up, plug it into the GoPro. So that's essentially gonna be your setup, but it's gonna be mounted inside the helmet. So in order to test your mic, just to make sure it has good compatibility, just go ahead and power your GoPro on, gonna hit record, grab the mic, test one, two, test one, two, check, 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 and then do this. This is how I test my microphone. Stop the recording and then just play it back to see, make sure it recorded it. Test one, two, test one, two, check, 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 check. And then do this. Perfect, so the microphone works, it is compatible. Go ahead and power that off, unplug everything. So there you go, the mic works, sounds good. Microphone adapter works, into the GoPro, good to go. So now with the GoPro Hero 10, there's a review that I did a while back on it. Whenever I'm recording, I always turn it on first. So this button first, and then I start recording. I don't use the fast record because whenever I use the fast record, it's intermittent. Like sometimes the external mic will work, sometimes it won't. It works pretty much every time I've got like, I would say like a 90 plus percent success rate. All right, so now that we've gone over all the parts there, so that's everything we need in terms of parts, we are moving on to the helmet. So like I said, I mount this arm set up pretty much right here so that the GoPro lens is centered with the helmet. So in order to figure out like kind of where that is, we're just gonna go ahead and take the GoPro and we are going to put it onto the mount here. As you guys can see here, there's not like a normal like GoPro arm. So I do have like a different bolt screw set up in there, which I'll be sure to link down below as well. I wanna say it's like a 10 pack of them or something like that. It's just to cut down on the amount that like these things are hanging off. I could probably go ahead and replace this one. I just forgot them at home. So that's pretty much how that is all going to be set up right there. You've got your audio adapter, your mic adapter here, plugged into the GoPro going through the door. And then we're gonna mount that, like I said, centered so that the lens is centered with the helmet. Basically on this side over here, that puts this mount, like the mounting option, pretty much right there. So we're going to put that base plate on and whenever we're ready to mount it, that's where it's gonna set, which we're pretty much ready to mount it. But before we do, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean this surface area with like alcohol, something that's basically gonna like take away any oils or anything from your hands that will cause the adhesive to not adhere quite as well. We are also gonna use a heat gun on both the surface of the helmet, we're gonna heat it up, and then we're gonna peel the 3M backing and we're gonna heat up the adhesive. And then whenever those are heated up, we're going to basically put it on there and then I'm gonna use some clamps to clamp it down. So just so you guys can see how the rest of this is set up, you want this to be as level as possible here just cause you're not really gonna have any articulation mounting it like that. So you want to make sure, you know, it's pretty level. You can always like level it in post, but basically take some extra time, make sure that is centered up and you can see where that's gonna be there. We have full contact on that entire patch right there. The microphone from there is going to plug in like that. And then it's going to run down this part of the helmet. Usually I push this 90 degree adapter back and I put a piece of tape right here so that this line is not like catching wind and like flailing all over the place. So we'll put that there, put a piece of tape, and then we're going to run the mic down and then behind the cheek pad. At this point, we're going to go ahead and remove the cheek pad. However, your helmet is set up, you know, that might be you know, a different process for you, but you can pretty much just get in there and start unclipping and removing. All right, you're gonna have this mounted here like this, right? And so you're gonna run this line 
you're gonna set it behind the cheek pad like this, and then you're gonna place the cheek pad back into there. Unfortunately, like there's a lot of extra line here. If you guys can find a mic that doesn't have all that extra line, that's awesome. Just like a lav mic. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna have this microphone like barely sticking out of the front of the, the cheek pad, right? You don't want it like right in the middle of the helmet, so of the chin guard, because whenever you breathe, you're gonna get a lot of like breath and like wind noise. So you want it basically barely be sticking out of the cheek pad, kind of like that. And that is going to help to isolate wind. Also a chin guard is gonna help to isolate wind. So you're not gonna get a lot of wind noise or you're gonna get less wind noise. You don't wanna keep it to where like whenever you exhale and you're breathing and stuff that it's gonna pick up a lot of that wind noise. So usually it's like right in the center for me, you could mount it a little higher if you need to, which is gonna be closer to the visor. Or you can mount it a little lower if you need to, which is gonna be closer to the bottom of the helmet and the chin curtain. So just find that sweet spot. It might be a little different for you. Usually for me, it's right in the center like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll uh, get this all mic'd up and set up. So clean this area, use some alcohol, wipe this all down. Make sure you have a nice clean mounting area. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove this adhesive. This adhesive, you don't wanna skimp, right? And go with something like super cheap. 3M is usually the best, has the best like adhesion quality and strength. I've gone with like replacement cheap options that like I got off of Amazon. They end up losing that adhesion and what'll happen is your camera will then fall off the helmet and just kind of be dangling by like the mic cable, which is not good, especially if it does that while you're writing. All right, so line up, like I said, make sure it's level here. I actually have a level in here that I could use, but that looks about good to me. So what I do from here is I pretty much hold the camera right here and I'm gonna angle this down so I know where I'm heating up against the helmet. And we're just gonna go ahead and heat that up. You don't wanna heat it up so much to where you're melting it, obviously. And then I put this right up against the two, so I'm heating both of them kinda of at the same time. That way, whenever I do press it against it, it gets adhesion with the maximum amount of heat. You can also see the texture kinda of change like as you heat it up. Woo, it's getting hot. All right, so then you press. Now at this point, we're going to go ahead and remove this, and we're going to press hard once again. If you want, you can basically do like this, press the whole helmet down. With that on there, I'm gonna go ahead and get like a vice grip and clamp it. So let me go do that real quick. Got a C-clamp, put it on there, tighten it up. All right, so that's what I do. And I'll just let that set for a while, make sure it's good and tight. But yeah, I'll probably let that set for like 20, 30 minutes, just to really make sure, let it cool down. Once it cools down, that should adhere really well. All right, to be continued. All right, guys, it's been a little bit. We've been letting this thing set, so it's, uh, should be good to go. Go ahead and take that off. Grab the camera and stuff. Mount it back on. Now with GoPro mounts, the actual GoPro ones, you have this little like piece of rubber in the middle that keeps that clamp from coming out. So press that down, lock it in place. There you go. Good to go. You do have some adjustment with this like this way, right? So that's good. So that's pretty much centered up. Right? That's pretty good. I'd say that's that's very good. Next up is putting the mic. I don't think I have duct tape here, but normally I just use like a piece of black duct tape just because it seems to hold up the best. I've used gaffer tape before too and it peels up. So duct tape, boop, piece right there. And then put this pad back in. All right, so we have the helmet pad back in. As you can see, the mic is just kind of dangling. So we're just gonna flip it over here. I know you guys can't quite see the best. So yeah, that's where I put the mic. Yeah, whenever you go ride, obviously like your cheeks will be pressing against the padding and it'll kind of keep it in place. There you go, just tape that piece. I'll find some tape and put it on there, but just kind of tighten stuff down, make sure everything's good and tight and you should be good to go. Replace the visor, go for a ride, try it out. But that's pretty much the updated Moto Vlog helmet setup for 2022. Let's uh, go for a ride and test it out. All right, guys, we are out on the bike for this ride selection i have picked my 21 yamaha mt09 sp i absolutely love this bike i'm sure you guys are hearing this audio because i did like a little microphone test like i was saying before i start recording 
I turn the camera on with the side button, so I turn the GoPro on with the side button, put my finger in the helmet, I like kind of tap and scratch the mic, and then I play it back real quick here, just to make sure that microphone is picking up my voice from inside the helmet. So I did hear the mic test did pass successfully. Now where I have it, it is a little higher in the cheek pad, just because where the adhesive ended up adhering the best to on the inside of the helmet is a little higher towards the left side of the cheek pad. You guys should still be able to hear me pretty clearly as per the test that I have done. I think it should be coming up pretty well. Also, the chin curtain really helps to keep that wind down. A lot of people end up asking me this, and I'm sure you guys will ask me this too. Like, you can do this exact same setup, and your audio quality probably isn't going to be quite be the same. And that's for two reasons. Reason number one, everybody's voice is different. How you project, how you speak is different. I've got like a certain tone and like uh, presence to my voice, which you guys are going to hear in the microphone and how that comes across in vocal quality and vocal clarity. And then I also have a beard. I have a full beard, which helps to close up any gap that would potentially be left from the chin curtain not covering. So basically the entire lower side of my helmet is covered up and there's no wind coming in from below. There is wind coming in from the visor because there's a little crack in the visor right now, but I doubt you guys are hearing too much of that wind noise. Just kind of experiment around with that mic placement. That's the best advice that I can give you because I know I'm going to get a bunch of people that ask me, what is your secret to getting the, the vocal or audio quality that you do? I mean, I've had a lot of people ask me that and I basically tell them it's all about mic placements and your voice. One of the things I can't give you guys <laughs> is my voice or my beard. That's all on you guys. Links not in the description below to those. <laughs> But yeah, all the rest of it, that's pretty much how you set up a Motovlog helmet. That's how I've set up my Motovlog helmet for the last, man, like since probably the second year in, you know, I had some changes, kind of figured it all out, dialed it all in. And you know, that's what I've been using. So people seem to be happy with like the image quality. My settings on my GoPro, I pretty much leave it to like auto color. I don't, you know, do pro tune or anything like that. So auto color, auto ISO, all that stuff. The only settings that I change is my frame rate and my recording quality so it's 1080p at 60 frames per second with the videos that i put on youtube that i'm recording and you know moto vlogging i don't really feel a need to like go like hyper crazy you know high quality even though and this is a little trade secret i do put out videos that are 4k but what i do 4k videos like are like a hella strain on your cpu whenever you're in the editing side of things right what i do is i record in 1080 but i export in 4k so it's not truly 4k i think premiere does kind of like make it better when Whenever you export it like that so the source isn't 4k but the export is 4k which means it's not actually 4k you'd have to start with 4k footage in order for it to be a true 4k export what that does for those videos is if you're playing it back in 1080 or you know an hd format 4k right it'll prevent artifacting on the youtube servers so it's basically a workaround for the compression that the youtube servers end up putting on your videos but that's a whole other video if you guys are talking about give you tips and tricks about that but that's just kind of a little insight to something that I do, which seems to work. And um, that's actually a piece of advice that was given to me from a subscriber back in the day. So to whoever gave me that piece of advice on that workaround for artifacting, thank you, I appreciate it. Anyways, guys, that's the Motovlog helmet setup video. Like I said, whatever you guys are interested in, in terms of the parts that I'm using, links down in the description below, I will link you through to every single thing I used in this setup video. So you guys can buy the Rurock Atlas 4.0 motorcycle helmet that I'm using. You can buy the arms, the adapters, the mic adapter, the GoPro, the SD cards, the mic, all of it, everything that you need to basically moto vlog linked down below. If you guys do have any questions though, please be sure to post up, comment, let me know. I will answer to the best of my knowledge. This is a setup that I've been using for a long time in this moto vlogging thing. You know, I'd say it's pretty successful. People seem to be really happy with the quality of the vlogs, the quality of the videos. I've been doing it, you know, for a couple years, six years. <laughs> Coming up on six years, I think. Yeah, people seem to be happy with it, so that's I'm stoked about that. Hope this was insightful. If it was, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up, lets YouTube know that we're doing a good job. I'm about to be distracted by this classic Chevelle. Yes, dude. Hell yeah. It's all, dude. That was a super clean Chevelle. Awesome. Looks like it was raised up a bit too. It's kind of cool. If you know of other people that are out there that are looking to do a Motovlog helmet setup, be sure to share the video with them. Hopefully it'll make it a little easier on them. I think that's it. Probably going to head back. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon also. So it sends you notifications of future uploads and activity. Until next time, y'all ride safe out there. Stay vigilant. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.